Now, Joe Biden is putting together his cabinet. Okay, so it kind of sounds like he went to Ikea and bought himself a smuskmuk and accidentally went live on Facebook while building it and, you know, CNN turned it into front page news. And honestly, that doesn't sound too far-fetched based on how much of a joke corporate media really is. But since late November, Joe Biden has been promising the most diverse cabinet in American history. His claim is to make a cabinet that looks like America. And boy, does this sound refreshing, right? Finally, a cabinet with, with average Americans from all race, creeds, genders, and sexual orientations that will put forth the ideals and will of the people over profit. And the second he made his first announcement, uh, we knew that this administration was going, all this administration was doing was hiding their pro war, pro corporate agendas under the thin veil of identity politics. They're using black and brown men and women as scapegoats to fool the American people into believing endless walls, Wall Street bailouts, and an erratic criminal justice system is good for America as they begin to conflate real protests for social justice and progress as domestic terrorism. Now, one of the earliest appointments announced was Neera Tandon to the Office of of Management and Budgets, or the OMB. Neer Tandon is the Indian-American former CEO of the Democratic think tank Center for American Progress. And as their title would suggest, they did think about progress, mostly for the enrichment of the American empire. Now, Tandon has worked closely with the Clintons and the Obamas, fueling their need for wars and ensuring that less Americans get health care by fighting against the Affordable Care Act. You know, after she helped get it passed the way we know it now. She's accepted donations from the uh, America's Health Insurance Plans, who effectively tried to demolish the Affordable Care Act. Now, this appointment doesn't just go against every citizen of America, but also against Joe Biden, who has been championing the Affordable Care Act to be the guiding light to retrieve the soul of America. Look, the OMB manages the budgets of the president, which means that she will likely cut funding for anything that relates to Americans getting health care. Neera Tandon believes that you need to earn your health care. It's not a right, but a gift you receive after you pledge allegiance to the United States of Clinton. I, I mean America. United States of, of America. That was a little, little imperial slip there. Now, the Center for American Progress, or CAP, has also taken money from Saudi Arabia, a nation that is number one in human rights violations and produces the most amount of shahs in the world. That is a, a undebatable fact. There, there is no other country that produces more shahs than, than Saudi Arabia. I, I look. I think the logic here is that if America takes Saudi's money, then you know they can purchase human rights violations and then become number one. And the important thing is that Neera Tandon helps bring America to number one. It doesn't matter in, in what, just, just that America is number one, right? But don't worry, the Saudis aren't the only ones Neera Tandon's organization has taken money from. It includes various large banking corporations, the war profiteers Northrop Grumman, the United Arab Emirates, and George Soros. The motto of CAP is, give us all of the money, especially if it's covered in blood. Now, Neera Tandon also famously said that Libya needs to be invaded and attacked because they have America's oil. Look, Neera Tandon is the human personification of Manifest Destiny in brownface. Her argument was that America can use the oil profits to pull us out of a deficit. If not, her recommendation was to cut social program. Well, like, what a fantastic Sophie's Choice the champions of capitalism pose, right? Either we engage in a war for resources, killing thousands of civilians as casualties of war, or cut social programs for the American working class. Every Indian person should be insulted that her skin tone is being used to erase 
the past of neoliberalism and warmongering. With her at the helm of the OMB, it is very likely that America will increase its war budget and start invading more countries under the guise of democracy. Democracies aren't created as a result of a war. And for those of you saying, well, what about America? You're wrong. America is not and never was a democracy. It is an oligarchy, just a little bit more compartmentalized than most. Look, don't forget, the only time white supremacy was deemed a domestic terror issue is when they stormed one of the oligarchy's oldest capitals, where the Yath Queen of Ice Cream and the Turtle King preside. Till then, the establishment was fine with cops working hand-in-hand -hand with organizations that are pro-exterminations of POCs. Neera Tandon is part of a long line of co-opted Indian Americans like Bobby Jindal, Nikki Haley, and Ajit Pai, who only care about corporatism and acquiring power for themselves. Power that they will use to make others suffer by cutting health care, decreasing social programs, and increasing wars. None of what she believes and stands for is remotely left-wing. She is a right-wing autocrat that now controls Joe Biden's wallet. She'll be dictating what his weekly allowance is. Did Joey oppress the working class today? Did he say socialism is as bad as murder? Good boy. Here's a new pair of aviators and your dog back. Look, the only Indian American in politics that's worth her salt is Seattle City Councilwoman and outspoken socialist Shama Sawan. This appointment alone should have dispelled any myth that Joe Biden can be pushed to the left. It should have solidified that he's a Republican war hawk. But let's keep going because the thin veil of identity politics doesn't come off as easy as one might think from the complacent liberal eyes. Retired African-American General Lloyd Austin has been picked as the Secretary of Defense. Now, relax everybody, okay? He retired in 2016 to get on the board of Raytheon, a weapons contractor responsible for the death of millions. So I'm sure he will be very objective when it comes to war and national security. Well, objective as long as, you know, the price is right. And when it comes to war and weapons contractors, the price is always right for an endless war. Now, sure, some of you are saying, hold up. You need to be retired from the military for seven years in order to serve in a cabinet, especially when you're in charge of the Pentagon. And you would be right. But don't worry. Biden's Congress will approve him with no problem. Look, we have wars to run and coups to plan. Well, coups in, in other countries who are giving their citizens more rights and social programs than America is, you know, they're making us look bad. Okay, giving people food and, like, shelter and health care while the so-called greatest democracy on earth is crippling its citizens with medical debts. Don't they know that nobody can be better than America? Okay, if these countries start treating their citizens way better than America is, then, then what is America going to do with all those business cards it's printed saying America is the number one country of all time? You're making our business cards look bad, Venezuela. And as if his connection to Raytheon wasn't bad enough, Lloyd Austin was in command of a unit in Iraq that committed heinous war crimes, which included killing naked Iraqi children and adults. Of course, Neera Tandon wanted to award him with the most prestigious award from the Center of American Progress, the Prize for Progressing Peace Award. But look, that's not all, right? Austin was also in charge of troops that destroyed villages in Syria, bombed hospitals in Afghanistan, and backed the Saudi genocide in Yemen. But he is the first black man that's ever been uh, the, the Secretary of Defense. Hey, has anyone ever considered that no black person has ever wanted this job because it involves the death of your conscience to justification for war and being too casual about casualties of war? An Obama-era economic advisor, uh, Obama and Clinton-era economic advisor, Janet Yellen, has been nominated for the position of Secretary of Treasury. Janet Yellen is not only the first woman to be nominated uh, for the chair of the Federal Reserve, but also to spearhead the position of the Secretary of Treasury. 
She has called for lowering interest rates and pushing for bigger relief during the pandemic. And now you could make the argument that the Fed itself could have could have taken the trillions that it got and figured out a way to redistribute those funds back to the people or say that banks should cancel their debts and interest rates with the amount of money that they got. Beyond that, Janet Yellen has helped corporations gain billions of dollars during this pandemic. And in order to ensure that the economy won't fall into a deficit, she's willing to cut Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicare, and various other social programs. Hey, maybe we should start another war with an oil-rich country and take their oil for America's profit. Look, she did admit that during the 2008 crash, the government did let too much money out the door. Now, if she'd like to make up for that, now would be the time to ensure that people don't lose their homes in the midst of a pandemic and perpetuate this problem even further. She can cancel rents, debt, and ensure that Americans get a retroactive monthly payment. But she's a capitalist that got hired to keep the system the way it is. Janet Yellen is most likely going to ensure that banks stay afloat as most of us lose our jobs, can't pay our bills, and wind up homeless. But fear not, fear not, she will say that it's, you know, it, it, it's bad that so many people are losing their homes and jobs, and, and it's a concern that we should all be concerned about, as she doles out another tax break to billionaires and a few trillion dollars to the Federal Reserve. Biden's pick for education secretary, Miguel Cardona, has been responsible for Connecticut schools reopening and spreading COVID throughout the state. Though he got the endorsement of some teachers' unions, the rank and file of these unions have a different story. Teachers in Connecticut pointed out how he, how he spent little to no time in a classroom, similar to his predecessor, Bessie DeVos, and has risen up the ranks to elitism. He stayed silent as schools reopened with almost no protective gear, and teachers that wanted to teach remotely were fired. It's likely that education won't be the focus of the education secretary. Cardona seems like he cares more for profit margins than ensuring educators have the tools necessary for their for children to learn. I mean, the only thing that differentiates him from Betsy DeVos, other than his ethnicity, is a connection to a mercenary organization. Unless everybody forgot, Betsy DeVos is connected to the mercenary organization Blackwater. I believe her brother is the CEO of that organization. Now, these are only a few picks, and I'm sure the rest of the appointments will be equally terrible for the people with the mask of identity politics. But the silver lining here is that there is a possibility that people might see the Democratic Party for what it is, a corporate pro-war party hell-bent on enriching itself while others suffers, kind of like the Republicans. People might see that identity politics and the minority community are just being used to get votes and support for some of the worst domestic and foreign policies around. And when you criticize these people, for who they are and what they're what they've they've done the the members of this party viciously attack you with the empathy of a playground bully and that has been your dispatch for this week thank you guys for tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed that if you did enjoy it if you did enjoy it please make sure to uh to to like share and subscribe because those things are important content like this is uh, often very suppressed uh, you know, this sort of this sort of stuff doesn't get shown to everybody, especially if you uh, watch this on any sort of uh, uh, corporate ma uh, corporate outlet like YouTube or Facebook or, or even iTunes. Um, you know, they they won't show it to uh, a whole lot of people. So uh, make sure you you hit the like, share and subscribe button. Uh, a great, another great way to to help this show, if you are on stable financial ground, is to make a one-time contribution or become a sustaining member over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, if you become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to live virtual stand-up comedy shows, and when touring comes back, you'll get tickets to my live shows when I come through your city. 
Uh, you also get bonus stand-up comedy content and early access to longer in-depth episodes of Forkful of Noodles before they're released out to the the general public, so, so it would seem. Um, while you're on my website, you can also download my stand-up comedy albums. I have a variety of different stand-up comedy albums, the most recent of which is called Politely Angry, uh, where I talk about capitalism and religion and corporatism, the prison industrial complex, and of course, I also take, make fun of and shit on Jeff Bezos, because why not? I think that dude needs to be taken down a couple pegs. So if you enjoy that kind of comedy, then you will probably enjoy my stand-up comedy albums as well. Uh, once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Thank you so much.